from two lovers of music meeting in a most unusual place to forming a band as renowned as the Beatles. Who would have thought their idea of creating the Beatles would bring them so much fame? The Beatles, however, got inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame even though they had split up by then. Their induction into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame was foreseen by a lot of fans because it was long overdue. With the Beatles down to three members after the murder of John Lennon, the absence of one of them during the induction ceremony was noticed. Why would anyone want to miss such a significant occasion? What could have really happened the day the Beatles got inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame? We'll dive right into this in detail. But before we do so, don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more exclusive content on the Beatles. Even after their split in the 1970s, the Beatles crew and their walk to stardom are still talked about today. The Rock and Roll Hall of Fame is widely talked about due to the high prestige attached to it. The idea behind the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame was conceived by Atlantic Records founder and R&B producer Ahmet Erdogan. Not just just him, Erdogan, and other music industry legends formed the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame Foundation in 1983 in hopes of creating a permanent shrine for rock music. The foundation planned to locate the new facility in Manhattan, close to the heart of the recording industry, and at first, few outsiders had any inkling of the plan. In Cleveland, Agora Theater owner Hank Loconti and his friends separately envisioned a museum to honor the city's seminal role in finding ways in popularizing rock music. Relations between Cleveland and New York hit rock bottom in 1989, notably when the foundation announced it would keep induction ceremonies in Manhattan, rather than moving them to the Cleveland Rock Hall. In addition, Clevelanders tax dollars would be required thus diverting millions of dollars away from the city's school system. This was a stark contrast to what a Plain Dealer editorial called a rock and roll industry grown fat on its success. The Rock and Roll Hall of Fame's construction cost balloon to $100 million, four times the original budget. When a record store opened inside Tower City in 1990, Rock Hall officials became angry and began to look at other sites besides Hearn Road, which they now claimed was too small to permit construction. After several anxious months, a new site was chosen on city-owned land at North Coast Harbor. With the new location came a reduction in height. The Rock Hall officially opened in September 1995. The Rock and Roll Hall of Fame continued year in and year out before the Beatles were finally inducted. They were inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in a ceremony held at New York's Waldorf Astoria Hotel. The popular Mick Jagger inducted the Beatles into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. It was the third annual event for the Hall of Fame. There were a lot of celebrities in attendance, including George Harrison, Ringo Starr, Yoko Ono, Julian Lennon, and Sean Lennon. The Beatles had to be inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Their music's popularity, influence, and most importantly, quality of music and music lyrics meant they deserved the recognition. That doesn't mean their induction ceremony happened without a hitch. McCartney didn't show up when the Beatles were inducted back in 1988. It was earlier suspected that it was due to an unresolved business issue with his former bandmates. He said, I was keen to go to the dinner and awards ceremony to pick up my award, but after 20 years, the Beatles still have some business differences which I had hoped would have been settled by now. Unfortunately, they haven't been, so I would feel like a complete hypocrite waving and smiling with both Harrison and Starr at a fake reunion. A lot of their fans felt like they had resolved their issues when John Lennon was inducted as a solo artist in 1994. On the induction day, McCartney was in the house that night to give the induction speech. He read it as a letter to his old friend. He said, I remember writing our first songs together. We used to go to my house, my dad's house, and we used to smoke Thai food tea with this pipe my dad kept in a drawer. It didn't do much for us, but it got us on the road. So now, years on, here we are, all these people. Here we are, assembled, to thank you for everything that you meant to all of us. This letter comes with love, from your friend Paul. John Lennon, you've made it. Tonight you are in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. To lots of fans, including McCartney's name in this speech, meant they had resolved their differences. The Beatles weren't the only band inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame on that day though. There were still lots of people in attendance even though Paul didn't show up. Most of the guests in attendance paid $300 to attend the event. There were lots of performances and fun at the event. Some of the musicians that were inducted were the Beach Boys, Bob Dylan, the Drifters, and the Supremes. Non-performers inducted into the Hall of Fame were Barry Gordy Jr., Led Belly, Woody Guthrie, and Les Paul. The Beach Boys' Mike Love commented from the stage saying, The Beach Boys are continuing to do 180 performances a year. I'd like to see the Mop Tops match that. 
This statement, however, felt like a direct attack. Mike Love of the Beach Boys had some critical words for the Fab Four. Love has a huge share of critics among the Beach Boy fans. Some fans feel he did everything he could to sabotage the Beach Boys' avant-garde period. Others criticize Love for his habit of suing members of his own family, namely his cousin and fellow Beach Boy, Brian Wilson. The night his band was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame was supposed to be a happy night, but it turned out that Love was angry. He was upset that Paul McCartney didn't bother to show up for the Beatles induction. According to most people that attended the event, the character Love displayed was irritable. In his short speech, he called out the Fab Four, Mick Jagger, and Bruce Springsteen. He said, the Beach Boys did about 180 performances last year. I'd like to see the Mop Tops, referring to the Beatles, match that. I'd like to see Mick Jagger get out on this stage and do I Get Around versus Jumpin' Jack Flash any day now. And I'd like to see some people kick out the jams, and I challenge the boss to get up on stage and jam. Love also criticized Paul's absence by referring to his band's famous vocal harmonies. He said Paul's refusal to attend the ceremony doesn't say much for rock and roll. He claims harmony is what is needed to make this world work. He also accused Jagger of being too timid to get on stage with the Beach Boys. Love said people in the audience might think he's insane, but their opinions didn't matter to him. Love's comments received a mix of boos and cheers. In a 2016 Rolling Stone interview, Love said he never delivered the punchline of the speech without specifying what he intended to say. If his comments were jocular, his intent wasn't apparent when he gave the speech. Fellow Beach Boy Carl Wilson was not happy with Love's comments. He was worried his band's career was over because of Love's speech. Lucky for him, the Beach Boy's Kokomo would reach number one on the Billboard Hot 100 later that year. What the surviving Beatles, or Jagger, or Springsteen thought about Love's words is unknown. However, when Bob Dylan was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame later that night, he thanked Love for not mentioning him. His comment was a classic Dylan quip. The event, however, closed with Harrison and Starr joining Dylan, Jagger, Bruce Springsteen, and a number of other performers for an informal jam session. Songs performed included I Saw Her Standing There, All Along the Watchtower, Twist and Shout, Stand By Me, Stop, In the Name of Love, Whole Lot of Shaking Going On, Hound Dog, just to mention a few. McCartney succeeded in not attending the induction ceremony. However, it took him another five years to receive his own solo induction. He wanted it so bad that he made his daughter, Stella, show up to the ceremony wearing a t-shirt that read, About Fucking Time. This was a little under a year after the death of Linda McCartney, and Paul was understandably emotional when he stepped up to the podium. His statement was, This is brilliant for me. But it's brilliant and also sad, of course, because I would have liked my baby to share this with me. She wanted this, but it's beautiful. She's beautiful. It's all beautiful. We're cool. He then called his daughter upstage to show off the About Fucking Time shirt, suggesting that the five-year wait wasn't so cool. That's all for today's video, guys. But before we end, what do you think about the Beatles split? Do you think Paul McCartney should have attended regardless of all odds? Let us know what you think in the comment section below. And if you haven't by now, ensure you subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any new updates about the Beatles.